What's going on guys? Today we're going to be removing a very unhappy engine from my 1989 Bayliner Capri and we're going to be removing the corresponding engine from a 1992 Ford Ranger and we're going to start the process of putting everything back together. Around November I was browsing Craigslist trying to find a boat and I saw this one for 700 bucks. It had been up for a little while and the price said firm. I was able to talk the guy down to 500 but the reason I was able to talk him down is because I'm not stupid. For this price point, I knew something was seriously wrong. And so, he didn't even fight me at all, if I'm honest with you. But, boats make people a little bit nervous because it's really expensive to fix them. A friend of mine just spent $7,000 replacing the engine in his boat. But this particular one has a special engine, which is the reason that I wanted it in the first place. In 1970, Ford started producing a four-cylinder motor they called the OHC. They called it that because it was the first overhead cam engine that Ford had produced. They were putting it in the Ford Pintos at the time, and so more often than not, people would just call them the Ford Pinto motor. They were very reliable, they were easy to work on, and they were cheap to manufacture. So in one configuration or another, these were available in cars and trucks until 1997. This just so happens to be one of them. This is a 1992 Ford Ranger with a 2.3 liter Ford Pinto motor. Now this truck has 218,000 miles and without hesitation, I would happily drive this thing across the country. And it cost me $460. When I started boat shopping, I noticed that they were putting this engine in boats. Most of them were carbureted, but I knew how reliable they were. I knew how easy to maintain and I knew how cheap they are. So it was an absolute no-brainer. The second I was able to get one for a good enough price, I picked it up. Now, of course, the boat owner said that it was running. He had torn it apart, but it was able to work. For the price, I knew there was something seriously wrong. But the whole reason I picked that boat is because I knew that I could inexpensively replace that motor, which, of course, I have to do. And so I can't think of a better way to celebrate the life of this truck then to donate the most important organ it has to my boat. Although it is a lot of work to remove an engine from a boat or a truck, it's not that difficult of a task. There's just a whole lot of stuff you have to remove, and sometimes you need specialty tools. I know this is probably going to make a lot of people cringe the amount of adapters I have on here, but you can't knock it till you try it, yo. Sweet. So based off of the reading that I've done and well just what I can see with my own eyes You pretty much have to take every accessory off of this thing in order to access these bolts or these bolts and or nuts And there is obviously one on the very very bottom that we have to get to so That's gonna be the hard one, but I think there's four or six up here. Those should be pretty easy to tackle So it's kind of tough to get the wrench on there for the last bolt on the starter, but we're pretty lucky that we can actually fit the wrench in here because there's been plenty of places where you couldn't. So getting the motor out of the boat wasn't exactly easier or more difficult than doing it in a car. I just didn't know what to look for and so that complicated things a little bit. So there's really only a couple things you need to know if you're gonna try to do this at home. One is to remove every single bolt with the exception of two and the reason you don't remove them is because you can't really remove them. There's one and there's one on the opposite side. All they're doing is they're holding this plate to the block. And so you're not going to be able to remove them anyway, but you don't have to. So there's one here and one here. So it's just a nut on the other side. And I tried to get it off, but it wasn't coming off. Kind of glad that I left it. So the other thing is remove the outdrive because it slips directly into here. And it's about a six inch shaft, maybe a little bit less. But Taking the engine out without removing the outdrive is pretty difficult, and regardless, it is way too easy to take the outdrive out. There's only six bolts, three on this side, three on the other side, and then the two rams. And if you take all that off, this thing slips right off. It's about 100 pounds, like I said. Just too stinking easy to do to not take it off. And then the last thing, like I said, every bolt, but I want to make it absolutely clear. There's these little ones. And you would think they're just for holding accessories on there. No, these still need to come off because these will absolutely prevent the engine from coming out. Outside of that, not that bad. The next thing we have to do is rip the good engine out of our donor truck. Now this truck has quite a few miles on it, so it's actually pretty difficult to remove some of these bolts. 
And even with the two inch body lift that this truck has, it's still difficult to reach some of them. So you gotta be patient and you gotta use all the tools and skills that you have, but eventually it'll come out. So back when I was still considering keeping the boat carbureted, I was wondering how different these motors were exactly. And I was thinking that since Ford made this engine, that it would be exactly the same from year to year. But I found out that's not the case. And so I figured I'd answer that question for you guys. So even though it's a fuel injected motor, they left the plug where the distributor goes. And this is even the same clip that holds down the distributor. So that's actually the same. So you are still able to put a distributor in there. But where the mechanical fuel pump is supposed to go, they never machined out the slot for the fuel pump. So if you look at the, app, the motor that came out of the boat, the slot is clearly there. And the distributor is clearly there. So that's the main difference that I've found so far. There's probably more. But fortunately, you're probably able to get an electric fuel pump that will run this thing. And so you're still able to make it work even though the engine's not exactly the same. I have the replacement motor stripped down to bare flywheel. So now we got to get the hub off of the other motor because this is what the spline of the outdrive slips directly into. So nothing's going to work without this guy. All right, so we have our hub removed from the flywheel. So that's obviously really important. But the other thing is this plate. It's not actually part of the engine. It's just attached to the engine. So we need to take this plate off, move it over to the other engine. So everything will bolt back up when we're done. So let's make that happen. Okay, so this is excellent news, literally for me. This was the last piece of the puzzle. Making sure that this plate was able to fit onto this engine means that this engine will be able to go in the boat. So big deal, it's all good. Just gotta make it happen now. So you can tell the water pumps are almost exactly the same until you actually look at the impellers. So the one off of the truck is a lot less hardy and is already starting to rust, so I wasn't gonna use that one anyway. But you look at this one, it's cast. There's a lot more meat on there. It's definitely the route to go. So this is gonna be the one that I'm putting on the Ranger motor before I install it. So the original plan was for me to use the bay liner alternator because it's a lot easier to fit it into the engine bay. So I was going to swap out this one because this is the one that came off of our Ranger motor. But then I was looking at the motor and that is what we call a crank position sensor for the fuel injection. So obviously we need to have the correct balancer and you can see that this one has the little tabs that the sensor reads and this one does not. So what we're gonna have to do, is we're gonna have to keep it the way it is, use the existing alternator bracket, which means we're gonna have to cut some of the boat away to make it all fit, which honestly I'm okay with. I was trying to get away from it, but it's not gonna bother me too much. Well guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm trying to keep on a Wednesday schedule where I post a video every Wednesday. And for me to do that this week, I wasn't able to get the boat running before I posted the video. So unfortunately we have to do a part two. I don't like doing that, but in this situation, I didn't have much of a choice. But we're making pretty good progress on the boat still, so I think it should be ready so I can get it up for the next Wednesday video. And then I can start working on my CNC machine again because I'm really trying to have this boat ready by Valentine's Day so I can surprise my wife out on the water. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.